Hello again, here is a video on the B-17 autopilot uh, which I think I might have mentioned in one of my other videos that I uploaded a while back um, that I'll be going over. This video is going to specifically look at the autopilot in the Flying Fortress and uh, just how it works. The C-1 autopilot was used in quite a few planes uh, and the B-17 was one of them. I've got a link in the description down below um, to a nice vintage old uh, wartime video that uh, describes the C-1 autopilot. If you're interested, you can check that out too. But in the meantime, um, here it is down here between the two seats. Um, and um, in this video, basically, we'll, we'll go over the operation um, and detail just how to use the thing. Okay, we'll start here on the ground, um, and then we'll go for a quick flight. Okay, so uh, let's get started then. So this is the main panel down here. I like using this view in 3D mode rather than the 2D pop-up view, uh, which also has its uses though, as you'll see later on in the video. So these are your main controls, I guess. Um, this is the master switch for the autopilot. It's a gang switch, so it operates the stabilizer switch at the same time. Um, this is what you use to initially activate the autopilot uh, and turn the power on initially. Um, it might look complex, but the autopilot is actually quite simple once you get to know it. Uh, there's quite a few knobs, but um, I'll run through them all shortly with you now. Basically, you've got a few different controls um, for the early on rudder and elevators um, and these are the switches here that control each of those channels um, so you can activate the early ons of the rudder and the elevator separately um, generally you activate them all and keep them all on but you can actually activate one channel if you really wanted to I guess I don't know why you would do that but generally you'd fly um, with all these switches on so you got the rudder here um, and the elevators. Um, so this gives you full control. Um, the autopilot gives the autopilot full control, I should say. Um, now up here we've got the turn control. The turn control basically does what it says. Um, you can basically order the um, order the autopilot to make turns. Obviously, don't turn the knob all the way to the end like I just did then. Um, anywhere from there, uh, well, up to about there, I guess, is sufficient. The more you turn the knob, the harder the uh, the plane will bank. Um, and when you want to level off again, always return to zero first. Wait for the plane to bank and then return to center there as I've done. Um, we'll go through it uh, further in more detail, I guess, once we get up in the air. Um, for now, I'll just go through um, a few of these knobs and these lights as well. These lights are the telltale lights, so th these are what you'll... Uh, turn on as well when you're s setting up the autopilot. If any of these lights are on um, It basically means that the control services for that light um, Are doing something that the autopilot is not happy with so you need to extinguish the light um, Before you activate the autopilot for that channel So you've got the early on the rudder and the elevator the ARE lights there um, So if any of these lights are on it just basically means that um, you shouldn't activate the autopilot until they're extinguished um, and you do that with these centering knobs just below here as well um, so basically you just rotate these knobs until those lights go out so if you, you're basically flying along you're in this position here you turn these knobs until the lights go out um, and then this is the rudder one until the lights go out and then you activate the rudder same for the ailerons as well wait till the lights go out and then you activate um, so that's just a, a very very quick rundown of, of how it works I guess um, I apologize it's quite brief um, but I'll, I'll go through it in much more detail these are the, sensi uh, the sensitivity and ratio knobs um, now basically the sensitivity adjusts how often the autopilot will correct the um, control surfaces when it detects that they might not be in sync um, the ratio controls how far the control surface will move every time the autopilot orders a correction. Now the turn compensation uh, knobs are probably the most handy of, of this lot here. Um, basically when you order a turn like I've, I've just done there, um, if you find that the plane is skidding quite a bit, um, you, can, you can decrease the skid. If it's not banking far enough, um, you can increase the bank without having to turn the turn control too far further. Um, and say you're making a turn and you're 
you, you know say your nose is too low or whatever you can um, you can order the elevators as well um, to raise the nose uh, but yeah basically those three knobs only control the attitude once the autopilot is turning the plane okay so that's basically it um, I'm gonna get this thing up in the air and we'll get it going um, and I won't bore you with the details um, Let's get things going here. Right away, sir. Oil pressure is rising. We're based out at the Bowman Airport again. And basically what I'll do is um, I'll take off on runway 60. Um, we'll head out on Oil course on, on, on heading 60 as well. Um, we'll continue in that direction. We'll run through the autopilot and then we'll get the order of pilot to turn us around and bring us home again um, okay so we've got our engines running we'll just taxi out now we'll be up in the air shortly I've chosen a fairly calm day to do this, there's not much wind if any it should be um, should be fairly good conditions to test out the autopilot I'd say um, seeing as we're just going to be running over the basics, we don't want to get into too much trouble. Alright, so we're um, heading on 6-0 pretty much. Uh, we've just taken off, as you can see. We're still quite low, so I'll um, we'll catch you back here in a few minutes once we've gained some more altitude. So here we are at just over 4,000 feet. Uh, we've been flying for a few minutes um, on course 60 uh, or thereabouts just heading out um, inland from the airfield which is behind us okay now this is the manual I'm going to be using uh, to base the in instructions off for this video um, it's the actual uh, operating instructions for the B-17 from 1943 what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw my own twist on some of the procedures um, only very slightly um, and we'll see how that goes turn up the turbo a bit. Basically we'll be enlisting the help of the bombardier to assist us with one part of the procedure. Alright, so uh, let's see what the manual says then, shall we? Okay, so what's the first item in the manual? Basically we want to throw on the master and stabilizer switches and then carefully trim the airplane for straight and level flight. So let's do that now. Um, we turn these on Ok so you've got master and stabilizer switch on, doesn't look like much has happened there but um, all we need to do now is trim the plane and then we can continue on with the steps. So I'm just having a look over the wings here, sometimes it just helps to get a, a bit of a visual cue rather than just relying on the instruments. Just passing 5000 feet. So our wings are looking good, I'm just going to throw in some elevator trim dropping now. Uh, I'm going to try and bring it back to the level if I can. Still climbing a little bit. Okay, looking good. Right. Next step, step three, is turn on the telltale lights. Okay, so as you can see there's some lights coming on now um, to show that some of the controls are not, uh, the autopilot is not happy with their position. So we'll just recheck and retrim if necessary. We're looking pretty good from a climb point of view. We're almost uh, dead on level. Our wings are level. Uh, we've got a little bit of skid. Uh, we must have a little bit of wind up here, but um, we're looking okay. Just dial in a little bit more elevator trim. And I heard that there was some music playing today. Now for more jump, and there's gonna be a little bit of 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 
throw on the PDI and service switches. So I'm going to do that now. It probably hasn't really been 10 minutes, but we'll do it anyway. It uh, hasn't really caused me trouble in the past. Okay, so the next step is to center the PDI by turning the plane and resuming straight and level flight. Now step 5 in itself isn't really that difficult, it's easy enough to center the PDI. It's this next step, step 6, which says with the PDI on 0, adjust the rudder centering knob until both rudder lights go out, then immediately throw the rudder switch. So the hard part here is keeping that PDI centered for long enough until we can uh, extinguish those rudder lights and then throw the rudder switch. But let's see if we can do it. So as you can see the PDI uh, is pretty much on center. Um, in front of us, uh, the music's just gone out of range. Um, the PDI is pretty much on zero. Um, so let's try and uh, dial in that rudder and get it activated then, shall we? So you can see the rudder light's on. We just want to extinguish that light whilst keeping the PDI centered. Have a look at the PDI. It's slightly to the right. So it says if PDI right, turn it that way. We'll turn it a little bit back and start again and just see if we can get those lights to um, extinguish. I haven't extinguished yet. Just having a bit of a play with it. No. And now the PDI has gone off center. Okay. So you can see how it's a real balancing act in a way. You can see how the PDI shifts around as you turn the plane. According to the manual from 1943, it is possible to center the PDI manually and put the, uh, activate the rudder. And I don't doubt that. I'm sure it can be done with enough time. Uh, but I've got a much easier way to do this. Um, I'm just turning back our course on 6-0 again and I'll show you a better way. Um, basically I'm going to order the bombardier to disengage the PDI from the autopilot and then bring the PDI back to center by himself. Now he's done that under my command and now he's just holding it there and he'll continue to hold that until we tell him to let it go and reconnect it again. So basically the PDI is now disconnected and so this leaves us free to uh, continue from step 6 as before to um, adjust the rudder centering knob until the lights go out and then flip the rudder switch as normal. Um, so we'll do that now. The autopilot will always follow and try and keep the PDI centered. So the whole purpose of this step is to have the PDI centered before we activate the rudder channel. So now I'm just going to run through and draw. trying to extinguish those lights before we activate it there we go PDI is nice and center because the bombardier is holding it so now the autopilot has our rudder effectively so now we can tell them to release the PDI and connect it back to the autopilot and the autopilot is nice and happy um, so we'll move on to the next step. Uh, with the wings level, adjust the aileron centering knob until the lights go out and then throw the switch on for the aileron channel. So it's just the same as what we did for the rudder, but we're not involving the PDI this time. I don't believe we need to. Um, I think the rudder is probably the most critical when it comes to the PDI. Um, so now we're just going to try and rotate this knob until, well, lights are out already okay we'll just flip on the switch then as long as the lights are off you can flip the switch on and now the autopilot has the ailerons as well so the next step is the elevators we do the same thing for the elevators basically you turn the centering knob until the lights go out and then we throw on the switch to activate the elevators before we do that just want to make sure that the elevators are in fact um, keeping the plane nice and trim Okay, that was nice and easy. Just a quick flick on that centering knob for the elevator. And that's it. Autopilot's engaged. Um, so that's basically all there is to it, guys. Um, the key points are basically before you engage the rudder channel, um, tell the bombardier to disconnect the PDI and center it himself and hold it there. Um, then activate the rudder channel and then hand back the PDI to the autopilot. Um, and then you're free to set up the rest of the autopilot. Um, the next step is basically to observe the PDI, artificial horizon, rate of climb, altimeter, um, and then retrim the centering knobs um, until the ship is flying straight and level. Now, in this case, 
having a look at the instruments just quickly, um, I don't think we really need to fine tune it. Um, if we did have to, just use those centering knobs um, on the order of power. Just bear with me, I'm just doing a bit of housekeeping here. Um, okay, yeah, so um, as you can see, the wings are fairly level. Um, we're not really climbing, we're probably dropping very, very slightly. We can correct that with the centering knob. Uh, I'm just going to have a quick look at the map here. What I want to do first is just, um, we're flying out for quite a while now. Um, we're just going to turn the plane around, so um, let's use the autopilot. Um, so the next step is, with the autopilot engaged, all course corrections must be made with turn control only. Always turn the knob with a slow, steady movement. Um, so as I mentioned before, um, the further you turn the knob, the harder the plane will bank. So always start slow, start moving it, and look at those lights light up as you turn it. That's just the control services momentarily um, wobbling around in the wind, I guess. Um, the autopilot normally sorts them out again. And look at that. Virtually perfectly coordinated turn. Hardly any slip skid there. I'm not touching the controls whatsoever. The autopilot is initiating this turn for us right now. Um, and it's a nice shallow bank, I guess you could say. We've got a little bit of climb, which is what we want. We've got a bit of skid there. Let's have a look at the autopilot. So as you can see, I've actually ordered in a little bit of skid uh, decrease already on the control. I'm just turning this back to increase skid, I guess you could say. See what difference it makes. I guess it has increased the skid a little bit. Um, you won't get a perfect, um, a perfectly coordinated turn, I guess, than what you could do with by yourself. But these little controls here do help. I'm just going to try and decrease that skid a bit more. Turn that knob up to decrease the skid. You can see as I turn that knob, it affects the rudder because the decreased skid knob um, it directly manipulates the rudder, basically. So those lights will flicker on and off a bit. Uh, but yeah, check that out. It's um, Almost perfect turn there. Hardly got any skid on. Just a nice, nice bank. Okay. Um, so we're currently turning, um, obviously to the right. Um, say if we want to increase the nose a bit more, or decrease the nose in this case, we could adjust that little knob there that I just did. And you'll notice the nose has come down possibly a little bit on the climb indicator. Well, working its way up again I think. You'll never get the controls um, perfectly tuned or I guess it just depends how much time you want to spend on it. Um, but yeah I think you'll find it's more than satisfactory um, by default default settings. Okay so let's, um, let's have a look here. We'll try and increase the turn a little bit more and see what that actually goes. So we've increased the bank. Look at the skid. It's actually improved have a quick look at the map. There's our airfield. Still got to keep turning. Got to make our U-turn and head back to base. So the autopilot is more than satisfactorily handling this turn for us. Um, now we want to return back to center. So what do we do? Um, as I mentioned on the ground before, always turn it slowly back to zero first. And you'll notice the rudder pedals moving as I move the control. To correct the skid in the plane. Okay, we're leveling off, or the autopilot's leveling off for us, I should say. Almost at zero on that control. I hope you guys can see, I'm just a bit lazy here, I'm doing it from up here on the seat. There we go, we're on zero. And we are fairly dead level, I could say. Looking good. Okay, so once the plane's level, it's returned from a bank. We come down and we can return the turn control back to center. And then we're all good to go again and fly straight and level. You notice the lights flickering, uh, but the autopilot will correct them. Okay, so say we did want to fine tune it a little bit. Um, so basically, as I mentioned before, um, use the centering knobs per step 9. Uh, until the ship is flying straight and as straight and level as possible. So if we wanted to change the bank angle, increase the climb, or say it's skidding a bit, uh, what do we do? Well, basically we just look at our, um, our instruments here. Uh, our climb's looking good actually, we've got no skid. Um, 
uh, wings are level. But anyway, if we wanted to make changes, just use these centering knobs. So we can raise the nose, the rudder, or the aileons um, to lower the wings. Either way, we can make just minute changes to affect the tuning of the autopilot until the plane is flying dead straight, basically. Um, but yeah, that's basically it, guys. Um, there's not much more to really tell. It's pretty much the basics of the system um, and what you need, I guess, to be on your way with the autopilot. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this installment and I uh, hope to make more videos again soon. Cheers.